Hello and welcome to Oracle Storage Tech Linear Tape File System Library Edition Sign In and Installation. In this video, we are going to cover the operating system install for Oracle LTFS LE. These instructions, along with the hardware requirements, can be found in the Storage Tech Linear Tape File System Library Edition Planning and Installation Guide. Oracle LTFS LE supports Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5 x86 64. You can obtain this software from the Oracle uh, eDelivery Linux website. So once in the Oracle eDelivery Linux website, what you're going to want to do is uh, do a media pack search on Oracle Linux x86 64-bit platform. From the results page here, you're, you're going to want to scroll down to the Oracle Linux Release 5 Update 5 Media Pack for x86-64. From the Media Pack page, you're going, you can either uh, download five, the five CDs or the DVD. In our case, we're, for our install, we're going to go ahead and download this DVD zip file. Uh, once you get that zip file downloaded, you unzip it, there'll be an image file in there and you'll burn that to a DVD with whatever CD uh, or, or image burning software you have. You'll take that DVD, you'll put it in your system, set your system up to boot from DVD, reboot your system, and you, you can begin the install. Go ahead and hit enter when you get to the boot page here. Now one thing you want to keep in mind, uh, and you'll see this in the install guide, is that any hard drives that you have in your system and or RAIDs that you create cannot exceed two terabytes. That's an Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5 limitation. Drivers load up here. All right, so once once you get uh, ready to to do the install, you'll want to choose the English language, of course, and what I found is that you want to use the tab and alt tab to to go through these screens however they're a little sticky gotta give them a few seconds try them again see I got it there okay keyboard type we want to go US okay local CD-ROM we want to do that and of course if, if this is your first time installing from the in this case our DVD we do want to probably check this just to make sure it's a good a good burn. So uh, I would go ahead and say OK here. However, for this particular disk, we've already checked it. So I'm going to go ahead and skip checking the DVD. And it should launch the installer. All right, so once you come up with the installer, you want to go ahead and hit the next button. You want to go ahead and do uh, the install Enterprise Linux. Click next. So here we got our hard drives. In this particular system, we've got one hard drive. It's selected. We want to go ahead, and, and I like to remove all partitions. Just make sure we get everything out of there. It's a fresh install. So I'll remove all partitions, leave everything else, uh, the defaults. It's going to ask you if you want to remove all partitions and all data on that drive. Go ahead and say yes. Now here we're going to want to put in our 
network information for our Ethernet card that should be plugged into the network. Now in the installation guide there's a checklist and you'll want to probably fill that out prior to doing your install. Help you uh, at this page. I'll show you where this is. In this particular case, we've got our LTFS LE server. We're going to give it a name, an IP, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server, and, and an alternate DNS server. So we've got that information. We're going to plug it into this screen right here. So on this system, our, our ETH0 port is plugged into the network. We don't want to use DHCP. We want to, we want to give it a static IP. So we're going to go ahead and edit it, go to manual configuration, put in the IP of our server. We want to give it the, put in the subnet mask. Make sure I put a zero in there, okay. Uh, we can go ahead and leave, enable IPv6 support checkbox, but we're going to go ahead and, and leave it alone. We're not going to do anything there. Uh, for the host name, we're going to go ahead and put in our fully qualified host name, including the domain. In this case, our host name is Bohemia. Don name is, uh, domain is .us.oracle.com. We want to go ahead and put in our gateway. Our primary DNS. Uh, hold on. You want to make sure you do this correctly, because if not, it could mess up your uh, Etsy host file and your resolve.com file. And we'll go over that after the install. You can fix it there. It's just uh, be nice if you get it. If you get it right here, you don't have to worry about it later. So what I like to do is just make sure <clears throat> that I got everything in there correctly. I know this is my host name, fully qualified. There's my IP address. Again, if you wanted to, you could certainly go back in here. Yep, this is looking good here. Our gateway, our primary DNS, secondary DNS, or in our case, from the checklist, it's alternate DNS for secondary. Go ahead and hit next. You want to go ahead and select your location. In this case, we're going to select Denver or our region, Mountain Time. Now here we want to give it the, the root password, whatever you want to give it. Now at this page, it's important that you do not select any software development, no web server, no clustering, no storage clustering uh, options. Uh, we, were, we are going to run a script after the, in, after the OS install that's going to install some, uh, some of these packages, but they're specific for LTFS LE. So at this point, we want to do, do a default installation or a, a basic installation of the OS. So at this page, just uh, leave the Customize Later button or Option button selected and click Next. So at this point, the installer has all the information it needs to do an installation. Go ahead and select Next here. First thing it'll do is it'll format uh, any of the disks that you uh, told it to from the hardware page or the hard drive page. In this case, we had one disk. It's going to uh, format that one hard drive, and then it should start installing all the software for the operating system on that disk. Now, if you do have multiple hard drives in your system. Uh, you'll have to refer to our best practices on how how best to set up your environment. There are several directories that uh, will help LTFS LE perform faster if you put them on their own disks. Uh, again, that's in the best practices guide. Uh, so you can take a look at that for your particular system.
All right, so it looks like it's getting ready to transfer the image to the hard drive or the OS files. And All right, so it looks like Oracle Enterprise Linux installation is complete. What you're going to want to do now is it should have kicked out your, your DVD and you'll want to remove that and then you're going to want to go ahead and reboot the system. The system is going to reboot and it's going to come back in here. It's going to take us to the first time configuration screens and we'll go ahead and, and run through that right after reboot here. <clears throat> All right, so once uh, we get we come to the welcome screen, which is basically the first time configuration screen, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and run through this list, set it up, hit the forward button, go ahead and accept the license agreement. Uh, at the firewall, what we're going to do here for this particular installation is we're going to go ahead and disable this for a, a basic LTFSLE install. Now, if you do want to enable the firewall, uh, you are definitely going to want to add port 7001 TCP IP and then you'll have to, have to add some other ports and you're also going to have to configure your ACSLS server for uh, firewall connectivity for both the ACSLS server and the client and in this case the client would be the LTFS LE server here so please refer to the ACSLS Administrator's Guide for information on how you would configure both ACSLS server and your LTFSLE server for use with a firewall. Again, for this in particular installation, we're not gonna we're gonna go ahead and disable it. Go ahead and click yes to say yes. I'm sure I want to do this. Uh, you can go ahead and, and leave SC Linux as enforcing. That's okay. Uh, Go ahead and hit forward on KDump unless you want to enable that. Date and time, we'll go ahead and set that up. In this case, I'm close enough for, for, this, for this install. At the Create User screen, we're going to go ahead and have you click forward. Go ahead and hit Continue. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a user, but we're going to do it from the command line after the OS is installed. We're going to go ahead and add a group and a user to that group. So we'll, we'll do that from the command line. Sound card. Certainly, if you uh, if you have one, you can certainly install that as well. Here, we don't have one, so we're going to go ahead and click Forward. No need to install any additional CDs. Go ahead and click Finish. So now, at this time, you're gonna, it's going to ask you, or it's going to go ahead and reboot the system for those changes to take effect. Once that comes up, you're going to come to the uh, uh, login page. Go ahead and log in with your uh, root username and password that you created during the install. And you'll see here, got the desktop to come up. Now, from the installation guide, they want you to do a few things. They're going to want you to verify your release. You can do that by going catting the Etsy. Uh, enterprise release file it should say enterprise Linux enterprise Linux server release 5.5 Carthage in parentheses you want to go ahead and verify that the kernel is uh, at a certain level I'll show you that You want your kernel to be at 2.6.18-194.el5. Now, from the previous video when setting up the hardware, the storage hardware, we have a, a fiber channel SAN switch that's zoned up that connects the drives in the partition library to the LTFSLE server. Now we've already got that set up and what we want to do is verify that we can indeed see those tape drives. So I'm going to do a cat on slash proc scuzzy scuzzy 
and you'll see here that I see my my three tape drives I've got my T10,000C my HP LTO5 and my IBM LTO5 so the OS has uh, configured ST drivers for all three of my drives and we are now ready to install LTFS LE on this server. 